though, with only 46 days to go until the election. The talk is all about the economy. Ari Fleischer served as press secretary for the current President Bush. Dede Myers served in that same capacity for President Bill Clinton. Good morning to both of you. Good morning, Matt. Good Ari, morning. Good morning, Ari. Let me start with where uh, that piece just left off by John Yang and Dana Perino saying that the reason you haven't heard the president out there answering questions from the press over the last several weeks and months is because he doesn't want to get into campaign politics. That's one version. Critics are going to say, Ari, that he's checked out, that he's not focused on this, and maybe that there are no answers. Where do you fall on this? Well, remember, he hasn't taken questions since early August, Matt, well before this crisis really hit. And I think it does come down to campaign politics. He doesn't want to get in the middle of the questions that would probably hurt John McCain more than anybody else. Because unfortunately, I say it sadly, the president's not popular. And, and Didi, he, he speaks briefly twice this week in the midst of some just incredible headlines with Lehman Brothers and Merrill Lynch and AIG and stocks going up and down. Uh, did he do enough when he spoke yesterday and took no questions? Well, obviously, they think the president can do more harm than good in this situation. If they thought he could help uh, resolve some of these uh, issues or stabilize the markets or contribute in any way, he would do more. But the problem is the president has no cre credibility. It's his economic philosophy, his economic team wow. that have contributed over the last eight years to this. And I think the White House realizes that, and they're trying to help by keeping him off the front uh, uh, front of the stage. Let, let me talk about the campaign right now. We, we've got the current administration trying to grapple with this economic crisis, and the two men who want to run the next administrations in this country, Senator Obama and Senator McCain, being forced, really, Ari, to, to comment and make judgments on this crisis on an almost hourly basis. Every time their planes touch down somewhere else, they're being forced to react to what is ever-developing news. Have we seen a dynamic, anything like that, seven weeks before a major election before? Well, I, I think it always depends on the news, but sure, this is the red-hot nature of American politics, particularly in an era where there's 24-hour news coverage, and this is a serious big story. I don't think, frankly, Matt, that either candidate has done a very good job addressing this. Uh, Barack Obama didn't have an answer to whether he supported the bailout of AIG. And John McCain seems to just want to blame this on corruption, when I think it's a much more fundamental economic problem. And the finger pointing is not what people want. They don't want to hear people blame the other party. They want to hear actually solutions. And I don't think either candidate has really done a good job with that yet. It's also an illustration how tough and tricky this is from an economic point of view. Also tricky from a political point of view, Didi. I mean, it's, it, the common logic is that this trouble in the economy would actually help Senator Obama because the troubles in the economy are happening under a Republican administration. Of course, Barack Obama running as the Democrat. But does he have a very difficult challenge? In other words, you take advantage of the story without seeming to take advantage of the suffering of the American people. Well, I, I think you have to be very careful. I, I think this is unprecedented. I think we haven't seen a situation where two candidates for president have had to react to circumstances this big and moving this quickly and trying to look like they can provide some leadership when no one knows, no one knows what it's going to look like tomorrow. So I think both of them, Senators Obama and McCain, need to be very careful. I think Senator Obama has an advantage in, the, in that he was not part of the administration or the party that brought us m much of this big mess. And I think he get, has an opportunity here to show that he would take the country in a different direction. Which is a good point, and, and Ari, it leads me to this question about John McCain. How does he, in the next couple of days and weeks, present himself as not part of the problem, but part of the solution? Well, I, I'd like to hear some economic proposals from Senator McCain and Senator Obama. You know, the, the political finger-pointing, saying this is the fault of one party or another, this whole thing started because people were taking out mortgages they couldn't afford to pay. That was something millions of individual Americans decided to do on their own. No one put a gun to their head and said, take out a loan that's interest rates going to ratchet up. And it was the banks that gave them that money and the lenders that gave them that money. That wasn't either the Democrats or the Republicans. And I respectfully so political disagree blame is with Washington. That, that's really not what that's not what caused this whole crisis to begin, where people can't pay their mortgages. Was Briefly, it was Didi. A, it was a, a a flurry of deregulation that created financial instruments that you know tried to hide the risk in a lot of these new investment vehicles, and this is the end result. It was Didi, a those philosophy. are called arms. They've been around forever. No, people have had mortgages arms, that ratcheted up over Ari, time forever. You know, you know a lot of this was because people who shouldn't have been getting this, loans of this both size McCain were and encouraged Obama, to get loans of this size. Both McCain and Obama have said this is the result of too little regulation in these markets, and that 
my friend is the fault and, and of a party that was very much in no, favor of deregulation until Monday. Not everything is caused by the politicians. <laughs> a lot of free note, individual Americans make bad decisions, too. On that note, I'm going to have to American say this people. segment is now <laughs> over. We'll provide an open phone line for you two to continue this discussion. <laughs> Call me, Ari. Let's talk. Ari and Didi, thank you both very much. We appreciate it.